we're very excited and interested to be uh, using more of uh, sort of modern day techniques, I guess, for genetic uh, manipulation and understanding. And probably the one that we're using the most right now is what we call marker-assisted selection. And that allows us to actually look at, number one, the parents we're using, looking at the genetics that they contain, and then deciding what the best crosses will be based on their genetics, not just based on physical characteristics that we can see. Uh, and then the second half of that is that after we've generated uh, seedlings from our crosses, we're actually able to go into those seedlings when they're very small, just you know, two or three inches tall, take a little snip of leaf tissue and analyze that and have some idea which of those might have more promising characteristics or might have seriously negative characteristics. Well, we have found in, in the world of apple genetics, there's a huge range of, of characteristics. The range that we have genetically is quite amazing. And then we look at other characteristics, uh, let's just say the, the flavors of apples. Uh, generally speaking, right now we look at the range of sweet to tart, maybe we talk about from a granny to a red delicious. But in reality, in the apple genome, we have all sorts of interesting, quirky little things. We have those that, that have a clove-like flavor. We have some that are cherry. We have one that's almost like a cherry lifesaver when it's fully ripened. And even some that have a anise or licorice flavor. So we're still looking at incorporating some of those interesting flavors into apples that have good texture, good size, good storageability, good appearance.